Hello everybody, this is Clem Z. Clemens and I want to welcome you to my platform today. How are you all doing? Uh, today we are having an exposition on Romans chapter 4 and I'm going to be doing that with my brother Mr. Richard Adewale Adediji. So as you're coming in, please help us share the video and invite your friends. So Mr. Richard, I've tried adding you. I hope uh, you are able to come on. Okay. Yes, good afternoon, Hello, sir. Hello, sir. You're welcome. How are you and the family? Fine, thank you. How's yours? We thank God. Okay, Pastor Tom Ogenerede, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. Uh, we can see Mrs. Shalom Olushola, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. Good afternoon to you. Uh, please, as we're coming in, I uh, would like us to quickly share the video. Emmanuel Anouye Jude, man of God, you're welcome, sir. I'm glad to have you on this platform. So uh, let's quickly share the video, <laughs> excuse me, and invite our friends to come uh, because today's discussion is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I can see Mr. Deji Yesufu, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. Uh, you know, uh, some, some few days ago, we started looking at the book of Romans and we looked at Romans chapter 3, you know, uh, last week. And today we are going to be looking at Romans chapter 4. And I want to encourage you to get your Bibles ready. Any translation that you have, please um, get a Bible close to you. Or just log on the internet and you'll get a Bible on the internet. Any translation at all. Because we would like you to read with us as we, as we read Romans chapter 4. And, you know, discuss it together. Helen, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. So let me quickly share the video also. Uh, as our viewers also share. Yes, Dagala Wazani, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. Now, uh, what we're doing today is more like a Bible study, so you will be free uh, to give your contributions or to ask questions. Now, how will you be able to do that? You can write your questions on the comment section if you have any. Uh, if you have any contribution, you can put on the comment section. But I'm sure you will also be able to call us, Mr. Richard. You can call, right? Yeah. Yes. So if you want to call in, you know, you are you can call Mr. Uh, you can call Richard. Oh. His name is Richard Adewale Adedeji. So you just um, on Facebook Messenger, you call him on Facebook Messenger, Adewale Richard Adedeji. We would like you to call in to give your contributions, to ask your questions and to even counter the discussion. If we are saying anything that you think is not true, that is not scriptural, you are free to call in to, to counter our points also. Okay. Oloro Femi Ayomide, you're welcome on the platform. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> uh, we've shared the video already, I want to believe. But if you haven't shared, please quickly share the video and invite your friends. Okay. Yes, Mr. Yomi yeah. Jegede is here. Cynthia. You're welcome. Mr. Deji, you okay. you're welcome. Thank you for joining. Okay, so Mr. Richard, yes. <clears throat> uh, can you just greet the audience, please? I just want to say happy Sunday to everybody. I hope we all had a fantastic time at our various places of worship. I just want to thank you for joining us, and I believe that as we are going to go into Romans chapter 4, the Lord will open our eyes and we will get a better understanding of the finished work on the cross. Thank you for joining us and God okay. bless you all. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, from the last video we did on Romans chapter 3, uh, I later read the comment and I saw there was a guy on the comment session who was talking about, it was who was arguing that you, you don't need faith for salvation. That you you get saved, first of all, before you you are given faith, I don't know if you read if you read the comment. So he was trying to he was trying to say that um, 
faith is not necessary for, fun, for salvation, that you first of all get salvation before you are given faith, before you need faith. So maybe today, I, I'm sure the guy, his name is something A.K. Okoro. A.K. Okoro, I, I think so, yes. So I, I hope that he'll be able to join us today uh, to listen to Romans chapter 4. I'm sure by the time we finish Romans chapter 4, it will be clearer to him that um, faith is a criteria for salvation. Diamond Ranty, you're welcome. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Tony Tiger, you're welcome on the platform. We're glad to have you. Okay, so let's get let's look at Romans chapter 4 now. You know, from Romans chapter 3, we were able to establish the fact that both Jew and Gentiles are under sin, right? And that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. And But however, uh, God is still justifying freely, right? Those who believe in him, who have faith in him, he's still justifying them. So the Bible told us in Romans chapter 3. And so we saw that God introduced a new kind of righteousness that is apart from the law, that is not based on Ten Commandments, on rules and regulation, on tithe and offering, on circumcision. No, he brought a new kind of righteousness that is greater than the righteousness that comes from the law. That is the, the Pharisaic kind of righteousness. So he brought a greater kind of righteousness, and that righteousness is apart from the law. It is from faith to faith. It begins with faith, and it ends with faith. So that was all we discussed, um, you know, um, in the last um, chapter, Romans chapter 3. But today, Romans chapter 4. So we are going to get started. If you have not gotten a Bible, I beg you to look for a Bible right now or log on to the Internet Bible so that you can open Romans chapter 4 with us. We are going to go from verse 1 down till the end today as time permits us. And you can call in. You can write your questions you can write your contributions. You can counter the teaching. If you think you have a contrary view, all everything is possible. Everything is allowed on this platform. Okay. So, Romans chapter 4. I, I, I mean, I love Romans chapter 4 so much. <laughs> so, so much. I don't know why, but I love it so much. I, I'm sure as, as we continue, you will, you will see why I said I love Romans chapter 4 so much. So, Mr. Richard, you know, last time you were the one doing the reading. Yes. So, maybe today I, I should read. Anyhow, but but you know one thing. Okay, maybe I, I'll, I'll read you read. Okay, you know one thing. I want us to look at Romans chapter three, the last okay. verse in yes. the Living Bible. In the Living yeah. Bible, okay, Romans three, the last verse in the Living Bible. So guys, go to Romans chapter three, the last verse, the last verse, and he said he wants it in the Living Bible. So let's let's look at it. Okay, I have it here. Okay. Ah, uh, that verse, verse 31. Yeah, verse 31. Let, let's start from there. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. I can see my brother Chima. You're welcome, sir. And my sweetheart is watching also. Top the gift. You're welcome. And the, the, crime, okay. the crime prophet too is here. Oh, yeah, the crime prophet is there too. Hello, you're welcome, sir. sir. So please just help us share the video as you're coming in. And if, if you, you want to call, you can call my messenger or you can send a message to my messenger, then I'll call you back. Okay. So, let me read it. <clears throat> Romans 3.31, the Bible said, Well then, well then, thank you, thank you, Deji, thank you, you're welcome. Well then, if we are saved by faith, does this mean that we no longer need obey God's laws? Just the opposite. In fact, only when we trust Jesus can we truly obey him. Only when we trust Jesus can we truly obey him. You know, the King James was saying that now that we have faith, we uphold the law. Right? Okay, so you want to throw light on that or we should... Yeah, because the scripture is saying that Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of the law. <laughs> fulfillment of the law. So when we obey him, then we have fulfilled the law. Yeah. If you look at, um, is it First John? No, Second John 5. Is it Second John? Let me quickly open that place. When, when he was talking about... If you can give the quotation, maybe... The, the commandment of God. That when we, ah, when okay. we believe 
Jesus Christ. I think I think I, I think it's first John three. Yeah, first John. Is it when we be, where it was saying that it, it was saying that this is the commandment. This is the commandment exactly that we believe we believe in the name of the Son of yes. God and love one another. That is the commandment, and that is what this yes. passage is trying to say. That when we put our faith in Jesus Christ, because He is the fulfillment of the law, then we have uphold the law. Yes, you understand what I'm trying to say. I get it. I get it. So because Jesus Christ has fulfilled the law. Because we are believing in him, we are technically, just like, because we believe in him, we have the righteousness of God. Jesus yes. Christ did not break the law. He fulfilled the law. Now, because we have put our own faith in Jesus Christ, because of him, we have uphold the law. Yes. And you know, what, what, what do people do when they, when they try to live by the law? They are trying to please God, exactly. right? And you know, some, some guys came to Jesus and they said, what work must we do that we might walk the work yes. of God? And Jesus said, this is the work of God, that you believe in the Son that he has sent. So once you believe in Jesus Christ, that is the obedience. Exactly. That is why in Christ, in Christ, we have fulfilled the law yes. also. In, in Christ. Christ. Yes. Because Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Of the law. So once we are in the end of the law, so once you are in him, you have fulfilled the law yes. already. That is why the Bible told us in Romans 8 that so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in, in us. us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Okay. So now we are born again. So once you are born again, you are automatically have fulfilled Good. the law in Christ. Great, great. <laughs> Dr. Kedo Ogwa, you're welcome. Okay, so we can move to Romans, Romans 4 now. Yeah. Today I'll be reading from Ah, let me let, let me read from um I have the Living Bible, I have Message Bible, I have NIV, and I have King James. Which one do you want? Uh maybe we should we should read King James first, because that's what everybody is used to. Are you sure? Maybe we should start with we should start with King James. Or, or, new, or you can use New King James. Me, okay. I like let me read King James. Okay, let me read. The Bible says verse one from King James. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? What has Abraham found? Verse 2. For if Abraham were justified by works, he had way off to glory, but not before God. If Abraham were justified by his work, then he has something to boast about, but not before God. Verse 3. For what sayeth the scripture? This is my friend, you're welcome. For what sayeth the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Verse 4 says, Now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, we're going to stop there. Is that verse 5 this, or 6? Verse 5. Verse 5. That's where we stop now. Now, this um, verse of scripture from 1 to 5 is one of the most important verses in the whole of scriptures. <laughs> one of the most important verses in the whole of scripture. 1 to 5. You know why? Because we all relate to Abraham. Every one of us. Whether Jews, whether Gentile, whether Christians, whether Muslims, right? Whether Jude Judaizers. All of us relate back to Abraham because Christianity, Islam, and Judaism all originated from Abraham. Now, so, and this place is talking about Abraham. And you know when I was in Nigeria, we used to sing Abraham, blessings are mine. I don't know if you know that song. Listen. And we say, Father Abraham had many sons, <laughs> many sons has Father Abraham, I'm one of them. But you know, we talk about Abraham. But we don't know 
how Abraham got justification. We don't know how Abraham got righteousness. We accept Abraham's blessings, but we refuse how Abraham got justification and got righteousness. And that is what Romans chapter 4 is saying. So, Mr. Richard, maybe I would like you to throw light on these verses, first of all, before I begin to, I, I begin to explain. But, but do you know one thing that casts my attention here? Okay. Can a Gentile link himself to Abraham physically? No, physically, no. So we as Gentiles, we cannot link ourselves to Abraham physically. Yes, only only by faith. Only by faith. Why? Because the Bible told us that all who, anybody who has faith is the son of Abraham. That's what the Bible said. I think that, that was in Galatians. That those who are of faith yeah. are Abraham's children. But, but, but the point I want to bring out from, from where we are right now, yeah. it says, verse 4 says, when people work, their wages are not a gift. Yes. Because we are made to understand that salvation, righteousness, eternal life, holiness is a gift. It's a yes. benefit of what happened on Calvary. So this place is now trying to say that when you work for something, when you work for something, they don't give you a gift. They pay you a wages. Salary. A salary. So trying to tell us here that this salvation we are talking about, it is not, you cannot work for it. It is a gift. <clears throat> that is a very important part of the scripture. For the yes. scripture tells us, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgave sinners. Wow. So the moment we don't understand this part of the scripture, then we engage our effort to please God. And that is where a lot of Christians today have fallen short. We want to please God. We want to do something. We want to merit the salvation that has been given us 2,000 years ago that even none of us have been born, but now we want to put something into it. But from this scripture, it's telling us that, no, 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 it doesn't work like that. Okay. You can come to I go ahead, yes. right? Okay, now, uh, I, I want to look at it from the Message Bible. Okay. Right? The Message Bible said from verse 1, it says, so how do we fit what we know of Abraham, our first father in the faith, into this new way of looking at things? If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he could certainly have taken credit for it. Yeah. If God approved Abraham because of what he did, Abraham would have taken credit for it. The next line says, but the story we are given is a God story, not an Abraham story. So the story we are given is a God story, not an Abraham story. But when we read that story, we are reading an Abraham story. We are looking at what Abraham did. But the message Bible said, no, that the story is not an Abraham story. It is a God story. Now why? What we read in scripture is this. Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And that was the turning point. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. So Abraham trusted God to set him right instead of him trying to set himself right. Now look at verse 4 and 5. I, I love this. Look at this. If you are a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay. Yep. We don't call your wages a gift. But if you see that the job is too big for you, that it is something only God can do, 
and you trust him to do it, you could never do it for yourself, no matter how hard and how long you walked. Well, that trusting him to do it, that trusting God to do it, is what gets you set right with God by God's gifts. Now, what is the Bible saying? That if you are a hard worker and you see that this job is too hard for you to do, that no matter how hard you work, no matter how long you work, you will not be able to finish the work. Then you need to trust in God to help you do the work. And that was what Abraham did. He saw that the work was too much for him to do. And so he had to trust in God to set him right. But what we are doing today, we want to work for salvation. When we know that there is no amount of work that we will do that can finish or that can be good enough in the sight of God. For Abraham, he saw that the work was too hard for him. So he had to enter into what God did for him. Not him trying to do by himself. And why did God make it that way? So that nobody would take credit for salvation. So nobody would say, oh God, you are owing me salvation. Come and give me. Because if you can work for it, then you can hold God and say, God, you are owing me. You must pay me salvation. But according to the standard of God, no matter how you work, even if you work over time, in the sight of God, you have not still done the work well. You can't finish the work. You can't do it. That is why only one man came and finished the work on the cross. And he said, it is finished. Why did he have to come? Because no human being could do the work. And so Abraham got justification because of his faith, not because of work. What do you have to say, Mr. Richard? He, he had justification. He put faith in the work that has not even been done yet. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> That's what happened. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's one thing most of us need to come. But when we come into that understanding, it is easy, it makes it easy for us to preach the gospel. Because what you don't understand, you cannot preach it. When you come into the understanding that it is God himself that is justifying men, it is God himself that is justifying us, it's very hard to preach the gospel. Sister Enze is here, Galatians 2, 11. If righteousness could come by the law, a.k.a. walk, then Christmas died. <laughs> Christmas died. In... No, Christ, Christ, then Christ. <laughs> then Christ, Christ died. died in... in... I think it's the phone. I thought you were yeah. <laughs> Then Christ died. In... Yes. Then, 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 because because now, so... there, there will be no need for him to come. If we could obtain salvation without his dying, then there was no need for him to come. There was no need for him to come. Into, you know, and, and one thing we should understand about God is that God does not waste his resources. God doesn't waste his resources. Yes, my sister, we see you. Can we continue reading? Okay. <clears throat> permit, me, permit me once more, Mr. Richard. Yes, sir. Permit me once more to read to read verse 4 and 5 in the Living Bible. Living, living Bible. Right? Are you there, sir? Yes, I'm here. Let me read 4 and 5 in the Living Bible. <clears throat> the Bible says, But didn't he earn his right to heaven by all the good things he did? That talking about Abraham. Mm -hmm. Didn't he earn his right to heaven by all the good things he did? The answer is no. For being saved... Is a gift. Mm. For being saved is a gift. If a person could earn it by being good, then it wouldn't be free. But it is. It is free. Look at the next line. It is given to those who do not work for it. Mm. Salvation is given to those who do not work for it. Why? Because God declares sinners to be good in his sight. 
if they have faith in Christ to save them from the wrath of God. So Living Bible says that salvation is given only to those who do not work for it. Anybody who tries to work for it will never get it. So if you are trying to work for salvation, I bet you, you will never get it. Because you will never meet the standard. The, the work is too hard for you. You can't do yeah. it. Pastor Clem, can, 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 can we... I, I remember when I was growing up, <laughs> if my wife is watching, she will say this a lot, that I, I always like drawing everything to the extreme end. Yeah. I want us to do that today. So, okay. What was Brother James trying to say in James chapter 2, 21? Okay. Now, James was trying to contradict what Paul wrote here. <laughs> right? James 2.21. James 2.21. Let, let's look at that. And, and, because I was talking to... One okay, of, guys. James. James. James 2.21. 21. Do you want me to read? Yeah, you can read I'm going to read it in New Living Translation. Okay. Because here... Yeah, let me read. We'll get a picture here. Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? Now, can you see what's happening here? <laughs> Hello? Yes. It, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You're breaking up. Oh, okay. Now, what is Brother James trying Go to say? Go ahead. What's Brother James trying to say here? Apostle James. <laughs> Yes, it's, it's, it's trying to say that Abraham was not justified by faith alone. Yeah. That he was justified by works hmm? when he offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar. Yeah. So he was trying to say, the next verse says, See, yes, thou have faith wrought with it works. So he's trying to say that um, Abraham's faith was made perfect because of his works. <laughs> But if if you now look at if you now look at he now went to this he now quoted the scriptures in twenty three. So when he now quoted the scriptures, as so it happened, just as the scripture says, Abraham believed God. He quoted the scripture, but in the scripture he quoted, there was no there was no works. In the scripture he quoted, there was no work. They said, Abraham believed God. But he was saying, but even if you now look at that story, did Isaac, did, um, did Father Abraham, did he offer Isaac? No. No, God, God, God had to provide God the lamb. God provided the lamb. That is, that is, because if Father Abraham had, you know, offered Isaac, then would I say something was wrong with that covenant? It could have been, even that covenant was not, it was still a covenant between God and God. God it was still God that provided the lamb. Even though Father yes. Abraham was willing, he went to the point that he was willing and God said, stop. God was still the one that provided a son. But even less, even... You know, you know, God, God was trying to prove to Abraham that I will not allow you to take credit for, this, for it. For it. Even though he still, yes, he believed, he had faith. Because the son was asking him as they were going, Father, where is the lamb that we're going to? He said, he, was, he himself was saying, God will provide. God will provide. He didn't say, you are the sacrifice. He said, God will provide. And God provided. Yes. He had a faith that God was going to provide. 
Because anytime some people, I'm very sure, if people will come and bring the scripture, that's why before you bring the scripture, yes. let us put the scripture there and try to obey. Because when he now finally concluded, he concluded that Abraham, the scripture says, he's, he's, he's still told, but I always tell people that when you read the Bible, read it objectively, read yes. it outside. Don't, you know, be part of it. You be outside it and read it. Because yes. Apostle James still came to quote the scripture. And when he quoted the scripture, he quoted the right scripture in 23. And so it happened, just as the scripture says. So with me, everything that I've said on top, that is my own religious belief. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. And, it's, and so it happened, just as the scripture says. Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. You know, um, the, 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 you know what God did? You know that lamb that God provided yeah. is a picture of Jesus Christ. Christ. Exactly. That God was trying to show to Abraham that I will not allow humans, right, to save themselves. I will not allow them make themselves the sacrifice that will save themselves. No. I am the one who will provide the sacrifice. I am the one who will provide the yeah. lamb. That lamb that was slain from the foundations of the before the foundations the of the world, I am going to make sure that that lamb is sacrificed, so that it will be a God yeah. story, not a, a, man, a man story. Exactly. So that it will be what God did by Himself, not what man could do. Because man's blood is contaminated with mm. sin. Man's blood is contaminated with sin, so man's blood cannot be good enough to redeem man. man. So God had to provide a lamb by himself. And you know, there is there, some, some Bible scholars are, are saying that the same mountain where Abraham took Isaac to, Mount Moriah, that it is, it is also called Calvary. Mm. That it was at the same place that Jesus Christ was crucified. I haven't done a research on that yet. But that same mountain where he took Isaac to, where God now provided the lamb by himself, that that was the same place that Jesus Christ, you know, was crucified mm. to prove to us that that lamb that was provided to Abraham is actually Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Coming to die for oh. all of us so that we will get salvation ah, by just believing. Are frozen. Is that true? I'm frozen? Somebody just wrote that both of us are frozen. <laughs> Well, I, I can see myself. Really. Let, let, let me check on. Let me check on my page. No, we are not frozen. We are still there. <laughs> okay. Still there. Okay. So, uh, brother James, brother James, was just trying to contradict himself because he quoted the scriptures. Mm -hmm. That it is by faith that Abraham got righteousness. Yes. And then the next line says, so you see that it is by works. Right? Not by faith alone. But where he quoted state that it is faith by faith alone. alone. That Abraham, you know, got justification by faith yeah. alone. Okay. So what have we said so far? That justification, righteousness, salvation, eternal life is a gift from God. And we only receive it by faith. And that we cannot work for it. Nobody can work for it. Because when he came to ask Jesus, what work must we work? Jesus said, no, the only work you need to work is to believe, to have faith. So faith in Christ Jesus now is the only work that Jesus requires. Not that you go and do some other works. No, it is faith in Christ Jesus. Okay. So we can continue reading from verse, uh, verse 6. Yeah. Eh? Okay, verse 6. Let me use King James now. The Bible said, Even as David also described the blessedness mm. of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, mm. saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. I would like us to, to, to deliberate on these three verses. From verse 6 to verse 8. He said, even as David. Now, David was in the Old Testament. Testament. And David was able to see into the mind of God. And to know that blessed is the man to whom God imputes righteousness. Now, how did David know that God is imputing righteousness, even though Jesus had not come to die physically? Why? Because God revealed these things to them. God revealed it to them. That, listen, even in the Old Testament, God was still imputing righteousness into people. Even before Jesus Christ came, that if they believe, then he imputes righteousness into them. And that was what God did to Abraham. That was what God did to Noah. That was what God did to Enoch. That was what God did to David, David himself. That was what God did to Samson. Because of their faith, God imputed righteousness into them. Those are what do you want to those say? Those are sir? the people that God, Jesus Christ was saying, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence took it by force. These are the people that took the kingdom by force, even though the kingdom was not made available. Because the scripture said, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. But people like David, they took it, because the kingdom was not made available, they took it by force. They were pressing into it through force. That's why we today, when somebody now calls to them and say, the kingdom of heaven is suffering violence, with violence, that kingdom has been presented to us. That kingdom is Jesus Christ. It is our ignorance that makes us to think that that kingdom is hidden. Jesus Christ said, I am the kingdom. He is the kingdom. He is the righteousness. But people like David, they, they took hold of the kingdom through violence. They searched out God. The Bible says, the prophet, Moses, they were searching for this time that God is going to put an end to sin. Yeah. It, it was, you know, they were, it was something that they put all their effort into. But we today, all the work has been done. Christ has finished the work on the cross. We are just to grab hold of eternal life. No more hindrances, no more separation. By the time David was speaking, there was sin was still in the world. Man was still separated. Man could not approach the throne of grace. The curtain has not been torn. But they were still grabbing hold of it. They were still inquiring of it. And God was still revealing to them. And that's what this part of the scripture says. It says in New Living Translation. Let me read from 6. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. They are declared righteous without working for it. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what mm. joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Because Jesus Christ on the cross, he wiped the slate clean. He wiped the slate wow. clean. He disarmed the enemy. <coughs> when, when the devil goes to God and says, Ah, Pastor Clem, you just got angry yesterday. God will say, not guilty. Because there is no record. Mm. He has cleaned that slate. Wow. And this is what <laughs> this is what the psalmist was describing. He said, "Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sin are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those who record the Lord has cleared. He has he cleared it with His blood, and He's now sitting down. He said, they said, there's no more sacrifice to be carried out for sin. Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit is in us." Now we are moving in the power of the kingdom. Yes, my brother. Pastor, yeah. Mr. Yes, Richard, if we preach this place the way it is, it will cause problems. <laughs> because if, if, you, if you preach this kind of thing in, in Nigeria, telling people who are in Christ yes. that God is no longer counting sin against them, you are you you you, are, you enter trouble. You can't preach this. Yeah, they, 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 they will tell us to balance it. And I'm still trying to yeah, they'll tell us to balance it. Because, but, but it's, it's clear it's here. Clear. You know, not, not one verse, but two, three verses are saying same the same thing. thing. That, listen, blessed is the man 
to whom the Lord imputed righteousness without works. But they will tell you that if you are not paying tithes, you cannot be right. You cannot be righteous. You are not giving first fruits. You cannot be righteous. You are not attending all the church meetings. You cannot be righteous. They'll tell you if you don't fast, you can't come close to God. If you are not fasting, you cannot be righteous. No. If you don't tie your hair, you cannot be righteous. If you are still wearing trousers as a lady, you cannot be righteous. But the Bible is telling us here that blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed righteousness without work, without work. So we don't have to work for it. And then the next thing again, say blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. And not only forgiven, but put out of sight. And then the one that blows my head the more is blessed is the man who sins the Lord will no longer count against him. So it means that anyone who is in Christ, God does not count sin against such a one. That is why the Bible said God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing men's sins, not counting men's sins against them. But we, we can't preach this because if you preach this, you are going to put yourself in trouble. But you know what? That is the good. Whether they like it or not, we are going to declare the counsel good. of God. God says anyone who believes he is blessed. Why is he blessed? Because God no longer counts sin against such a one. God doesn't count sin against such a one. Your church people may count sin against yeah. you. Your pastors may count sin against you. Your prayer warriors may count sin against you. Your friends may count sin against you. But the Bible says, once you are in Christ, God does not count sin against you again. Why? Because you have been freed from sin. Romans chapter 7. God can no longer count sin against you. God does not even remember sins anymore. Because in the new covenant, he said, this is the covenant that I will make with them. He said, their sins and their iniquities remember. I will remember no more. So when you are in Christ, God is not counting remember. sin against you. Why? Because he's imputing righteousness into you without your works. Interesting. Because the, the, the Bible in, in, in Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, he said, Everlasting that is going to come and release everlasting righteousness, righteousness, and put an end to, and sin. An end to sin. So, everlasting righteousness, our righteousness is available now. You just need to be righteous, conscious. All those sins that people are talking about, you just be righteous, conscious, righteous, conscious, and oh. notice that those sins are gone. Wow, I was listening to um, um, Brother Paul yesterday. <laughs> He okay. made an illustration. He said, what the church was able to teach us in the old, they were able to teach us morals. Yeah. Morals of, you know, us dressing moderately, you know, that all those things are moral. They didn't teach us salvation. They didn't teach us the gospel. The church in Nigeria That's was, true. They were successful in teaching morals. You know, you don't That's do true. this, you do it exactly. But they didn't teach us the gospel. And when you teach people the gospel, you don't need to teach them morale. You don't need to teach them. You don't need to look at this person. You don't need to wear this. When you yes. teach them the gospel, you don't need to start teaching them morals. And that's what we see in our church today. Some churches will say, if you don't cover your head, they won't allow you to come into the church. Are you not trying to say that God is not strong enough to deal with the issue in that person's life? Are we trying to help God? So when we think we want to preach the gospel and we are trying to help God, that, that gospel, is, it has already failed. Because the gospel is the power of God saving all those who believe. In that, in that gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. So the gospel is, is, all, is all in one. It, it is a potent, you just preach it, it will do his work. But what, what the African church has tried to do, they want to help the gospel. Let's not tell them, let, let's put a restriction, let's... It's not working. We have seen the effects. 30 years of it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the nation is still backward. Evil is still prevailing yeah. everywhere. 
and righteousness is supposed to exalt a nation. We did not more churches, more churches, more, more evil. evil. Why? Because morality cannot save no. anybody. It's moral, it's dead work. Morality is not is not salvation, it's dead, dead work, work. it's human yeah. effort. It is only when a man is truly born again by faith and he receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the only time you can even live a moral life. But to try to do more, to teach morality without teaching people faith, without teaching them to trust in God, to help them, they will fail. Why? Because the flesh profited nothing. Human effort profited nothing. It is the spirit that gives life. If you don't teach them about the spirit and you teach them about human effort, they will fail. Because it, it simply means that we are putting our confidence in flesh. In flesh. And that's it. When we are teaching morality, we are putting our confidence in flesh. We are not going into the spirit. We are putting our confidence in, okay, I'll cover my hair. I won't, I won't wear a ring. <laughs> Pastor Clem, we have a, we have a long way to go, sir. <laughs> Okay, let's continue now, yeah. right? Nine. Now, verse nine, yes. eh? Now, the Bible says, Comment this blessedness, this forgiveness of sins, this clean slate, this imputed righteousness. Does it come upon the circumcision only? That is, does it come upon the Jews only? Or upon the uncircumcision also? So does it come to only those who are living by Ten Commandments? Or it also comes to those who are not living by Ten Commandments? Now look at the answer. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it reckoned to him? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, the Bible said. But in uncircumcision. Now, what does it mean? That Abraham got that righteousness not after he circumcised himself. Not after he became uh, circumcised. But before he became circumcised. Look at the next line. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision a seal of the righteousness of faith which he had yet been uncircumcised that he might be the father of all them that believe though they be not circumcised so that righteousness might be imputed unto them also now what is the bible telling us there that abraham got this righteousness, this justification, this blessedness, he got it before circumcision. So it was not because Abraham circumcised himself that he got the righteousness. No. He got the righteousness because of his faith. So the circumcision is only a confirmation that Abraham was already righteous by faith. Mm -hmm. But you know, the Jews misunderstood what happened to Abraham. And so after Jesus died and resurrected, and people started believing in Jesus, the Jews said, no, you are not saved until you are circumcised. You cannot get righteousness until you are circumcised. You cannot be justified until you are circumcised. Why? Because they did not know that Abraham already got justification before he got circumcision. What do you have to say, sir? Yeah, and, and that is still the problem we face in the body of Christ today. People want to work to deserve their salvation. Although they are not they're not they don't want to be circumcised physically. But when somebody comes and say, if you don't pay your tithe, you can't make heaven. So it means that tithe is the circumcision here. <laughs> it's still the same way. People want to, you know. They want to justify their salvation by, you know, doing something. Okay, it's because, like I, like I always tell people, I'm not against people doing good. I'm not, I'm not against you, you know, giving your money for a good cause, you know. But never put your faith in that as the ground for your salvation. 
a grant for our salvation is what happened on that cross. As, 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 as a child of God, it is in our heart to do good. It is in our heart to help. We are supposed to do good things. The question is, it is not those good things that we did that saved us. The moment we put our focus on those good things that are saving us, we are simply breaking faith. Our salvation was secured by what happened on that cross. That is our eyes being fixed on Jesus Christ. The moment we now say that it's not because of this thing that I'm doing, ah, now I'm living, you know, all those bad, bad things I used to, I don't do them now. You now start putting confidence in yourself that you are breaking faith. And that is what, you know, we see around us today. A lot of people, if they, put, they, they remove their eyes from the finished work and they start putting their faith in what they are doing. And before you know it, <laughs> you start crying like Brother Paul. <laughs> I said, I want to do good, but I cannot. <laughs> I think, I think it's, but we will still get to that place. Yes, yeah, so we'll get there. Yeah. Romans yeah. seven. So, but you know, you know, you know, there are some, there are some, uh, some Jewish people yeah. who say that Jesus only came for the Jews and not for the Gentiles. In other words, the Gentiles cannot be justified that Jesus came only for the Jews. But, uh, but where we, where we, where, where, where we saw here now. Sorry, where we just read there now, but Paul was making it clear that he came for the whole world. Yes. And he said that Abraham was already declared a righteous man before he became a yeah. Jew. Because that circumcision is initiation into the Jewish mm, lineage. Yeah. So that circumcision is the, is the initiation ceremony into Judaism. Mm -hmm. But the Bible told us that Abraham was already a righteous man, man before he was, by faith yeah, before, he was circumcised. before he got circumcision, before he became a yeah. Jew. So that is a proof that even if you are not a Jew, if you put faith in Jesus Christ, yes. you are justified yes. and you are given righteousness. Yes. Now, look at what, um, look at what verse, verse 11 said. Let me read from the Living Bible. Verse 11. Yeah. Right? 11 and 12. The Bible said, It wasn't until later on, after God had promised to bless him because of his faith, that he was circumcised. The circumcision ceremony was a sign that Abraham already had faith and that God had already accepted him and declared him just and good in his sight before the ceremony took place. So, Abraham is the spiritual father of those who believe and are saved without obeying Jewish laws. Abraham is the spiritual father of those who believe and are saved without obeying Jewish laws. We see then that those who do not keep these rules are justified by faith in the sight of God. And Abraham is also the spiritual father of those Jews who have been circumcised. They can see from, the, from his example that it is not this ceremony that saves them. For Abraham found favor with God by faith alone before he was circumcised. So it's clear. <laughs> okay. But but but, the, but you know that the, the African church they don't they don't you know they don't even though I could remember was it in the book of um, Philippians that but Paul was saying the reason why they want you to be circumcised is because they want to get money. But I was yes. now looking at it. How come the African church, they don't, you know, talk about this, you know, circumcision? Is it that they don't want money? That's another avenue for money. Why are they not, <laughs> why are they not hammering on it? Why are they only hammering on tight fresh fruits and, you know, and seed, seed time? You know, but, but, but you know, but you know it, it, it's still a tradition uh, in, in Africa yeah. that you must circumcise your child when, you're, when your child is yeah. born, your male, male, male child. Yeah. Yes, but... They don't, they don't stress it, but it's just something that people just do, you know, ritualistically or so, so to speak. They just, you know, do it because they want to follow what yeah. Abraham did, yeah. you know, to initiate that, that an initiation into the Jewish yeah. lineage. But even though we are not Jews, but we are, we are doing it because we copied everything from the Jews. <laughs> now, now we have the, what's it called? The pool. Circumcision of the no, heart. We have, no, I said now we have the pool of Bathsheba in, in Nigeria. Yeah, oh, pull up the side. 
<laughs> He's well. God, God, God will help Amen. us. Amen. Okay, let's go to verse, verse 13. Yeah. Eh? Okay. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law. Was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Let's take those two. So the promise of salvation was not given to Abraham through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Because if those who are of the law in, are the ones who will inherit salvation, then faith is made void. And the promise of God to Abraham is useless. What will you say, Let me read it in New Living Translation. Clearly, God's okay. promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendant was based not on his obedience to God's law. Because even then, there was no law. Yes. It was based on, not on his obedience to God's law, but on a right relationship with God that came by faith. Right relationship with God that came by faith. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promise is pointless. Wow, that, that, is, that is the powerful it's, point. It's a powerful. If God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary. So, What about those people that are saying, if you don't pay tight, things will be tight for you. If you don't pay tight, you will not, you will not go to those heaven. Those are businessmen. We have concluded that they are businessmen. That, that is not scripture. <laughs> they, are, they, they simply want their business. They are swindlers. They just want people's money. Because the law has nothing to do. Before the law came, God promised Abraham that through his seed, he's going to save the world. So let's assume, although some people say that, even like, like I always tell people, even if we were to look at it from the scripture, the law came when they said, that shall not eat, a man fell. But after that, God made a promise. Even when, before God after they, 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 they fell, God said, through the seed of the woman, he's going to save man. Then now came here to Father Abraham and made a promise to him that through your seed, he's going to save the world. So the promise supersedes the law. And the scripture was clear enough to tell us that the reason why God introduced the law is so that we would appreciate grace when we see grace. Because without the law, we cannot know how sinful we are. So God put the law so that we can see that, ah, this is the problem. I don't think I can save myself. Oh, let me look up to salvation. So the promise was there, but God wanted humanity to see how far we have fallen. If we, if we, like, when we continue reading, then we will see. <laughs> and it's like I'm going ahead of myself. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know, you know, we said before yeah. when we started from the message, the message Bible that if you see that the work is too hard for you to do, it depends on God. Then you have to trust yeah. God to do it yeah. for you. So that is what the law came yeah. to show us. That the work is too hard that nobody can do it. Exactly. So let us not trust in God to do it for us. Okay. Uh what verse are we now? Verse 14, right? 15. No, no, I, I okay, 15, okay. Because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Now, why didn't God put salvation dependent on the law? Why did he put it dependent on faith? The Bible said the reason is because the law worketh wrath. The law leads to anger. The law leads to punishment. The law leads to death. The law leads to sin and death. So God did, didn't do it that way. For where there is no law, there is no transgression. So God did not put salvation dependent on law. Because if he did that, it means that he will always be pouring his anger and his wrath upon us. Yeah. So he didn't put salvation dependent on the law. 
Now look at verse 16. See the wisdom of God in verse 16. The Bible said, Therefore, it is of faith. The promise is of faith. The inheritance is of faith. The justification is of faith. The eternal life is of faith. So that it might be by grace. Everything I listed now is by faith so that it might be by grace. For those who are fighting grace, they should listen now. <laughs> that salvation, eternal life, forgiveness of sins, justification, righteousness, all of them, God made it to be based on faith so that it might be by grace. To the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Mr. Richard, permit me to, to explain this place, please. Now, the Bible is saying that God wants the promise of salvation to come to all the seed, not to come to only the Jews alone, not to come to only those who pay tithe alone. Not to come to only those who give first fruit alone. God wants the promise of salvation, the justification, and the eternal life to be sure, to be certain to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law. Not only to those who obey Ten Commandments. Not only to those who live under Jewish traditions. But also to those who simply have faith in Christ Jesus. Because if God had made the, the salvation and the promise dependent on the law, there was no way Gentiles would have, would have been saved. There was no possibility of Gentiles getting justification and salvation if God had made it dependent on the law. But God made it dependent on faith so that it might be by grace, so that the promise might be certain, might be sure to all the seed. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith. That is, we Gentiles who came to God by faith. So salvation came to us, not through the law, but through faith. Because if God gives it through the law, what we would have gotten is only the wrath of God, only the anger of God. So God made sure that salvation will not be dependent on law. It will only be dependent on faith so that it might be by grace. So that it might be a free gift, an undeserved gift. That's what God did. And that is why we need to glorify God and just thank him for what he has done for us. Mr. Yeah, Richard. But some people will come and argue here. Let, let me read it in, 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 in good news before I argue. Because now I try to okay. picture how they will come and, you know. <laughs> it says, 16 says, I'm reading good news. And so the promise was based on faith. In order that the promise should be guaranteed as God's free gift to all of Adam's descendants. Awesome. Not just to those who obey the law, but also to those who believe as Abraham did. For Abraham wow. is the spiritual father of all of us. Now, now here, the point here is that he says, God promised it so that it will be guaranteed Assurance. Assurance. That's why he promised it. But some people now come and say, okay, but he said not just to those who obey the law. So which means those who obey the law, can they get the gift? They cannot get it. But from what we read here, it says, if you look at verse 15, it says, the law brings down God's anger. Yes. The law would always bring down the anger of God. So, as long as you are under that law, it is anger that you are putting on yourself. You are putting yourself under the cause. So, that's why you need to, that's why the Bible says, when the tutor shows you to your salvation, then you leave the tutor alone. You leave that law. You leave the anger alone. Then you come under the grace. But, but the part that shocked me here is that it says, in order that the promise should be guaranteed as God's free. Not just, I don't know why the scripture always put a gift is always free. Yes. But they always emphasize that 
God got God's free gift. It is a gift. And nobody works for a gift. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> it was a, and no matter no matter how hard you work, you won't mm. get it. God is giving it only to those who do not work for it. So salvation is given to those who do not work for it. Justification is given to those who do not work yeah. for it. Yeah. Eternal life is given to those who do not work mm. for it. If you are trying to work for it, what you will get is anger and the wrath of God. Because you will be, because you will not be able be, to to meet the standard. You breaking the law, and the moment you break the law, problem. The moment you break the law, problem. That's why Brother Paul said, "If you can keep the whole law, good." But we all know, we all know that no human being on earth can keep the whole law. You know, even last week we saw that we saw that by the deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Yeah. So even if, let's assume there is somebody who can keep all of them, you yeah. are still not justified. Yeah. That's the scripture. <laughs> okay. What verse now? 17, eh? Yeah. But you know, Mr. Richard, this, this verse 16, mm. eh? If we can understand it, if Christians can understand it, then there is no fear of, oh, will I lose my salvation? Will I not lose my salvation? Mm. Because it's, the Bible says, as long as you have it's, faith, the promise it's, is sure, it's, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah. Eternal life is guaranteed, salvation is guaranteed, yeah. as long as you have it's, faith. Let's go ahead. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so that thy seed, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God. Through unbelief. You see now, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was, okay, where, where am I 20. now? 20, mm -hmm. right? but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, but was strong in faith. That is what I want every believer to know. That the only thing you need is to be strong in faith. Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God because of unbelief. And that is why you and I must not stagger at the promise of God. If God said that whoever believes in him will not perish, don't stagger at it. Believe it. If God said, whoever believes in Jesus Christ will have eternal life, don't stagger. Don't doubt. Believe it. If the Bible said, those who believe in Jesus are not condemned, don't stagger at the promise of God. Just believe it. If God said, those who believe in Christ have passed from death to life already, don't stagger. Just believe it. If the Bible said that those who believe in Christ will not be disappointed, do not, do not stagger, just believe. If the Bible said those who believe in Christ will not be put to shame, don't stagger, just believe it. If the Bible said that those who believe in Christ have everlasting life, I beg you, do not stagger in faith. Mr. Richard, the Bible told us that Abraham did not look at his body that yeah, was dead. Yeah, 100 years old. He did not look at the body of Sarah that mm -hmm. was dead. He was looking at the promise. promise. But today we are looking at our body. We are looking at what happens to us in the flesh. We are looking at the weaknesses that we still have. Oh, I committed this sin yesterday. I fell short yesterday. No, Abraham did not look at his body. He didn't look at his flesh. Why? Because the flesh profited nothing. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that gives life. 
And the Bible told us here that Abraham believed in the God who quickeneth the dead and calleth for the things that be not as though they were. If we can understand that line alone, that even though our body died because of sin, our spirit is alive because of righteousness. Yes. If we can believe that as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all are made alive, then you don't need to stagger in faith. That is why we need to believe in the God who quickened the dead. Don't look at your body. Don't look at yourself. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the promise that was given to us. But we are not looking at him. We are looking at yeah, ourselves. Not, yeah. that, 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 is, that is why um, Apostle Paul said, he said the mystery that was kept from time is Christ in us. The moment we have Christ in us, he says, it is, he said, that spirit that woke Jesus Christ up from the grave, that is the spirit in us. When you have mm. that spirit in you, when you die, that spirit that you have in you, that is what will wake us up. That is the hope wow. of glory. He said that that wow. did not fail Jesus Christ in the grave mm. will not fail us. The moment wow. you understand that, that it is that spirit, he said, he said that the word I speak to you is spirit and life. That mm. was the same spirit that was in Jesus Christ. And I always tell people that when Jesus Christ went to the grave, he didn't go with he went with the sin of the whole world. Mm. With the sin of the whole world in him, that spirit woke him up. Now, me, I am not going to die with the sin of the whole world. <laughs> so that spirit would wake you up. That is our hope. That we have that spirit in us. That is the hope of glory. That on that day, we would because we have we have life already in us, even though our flesh will die because of sin, but our spirit, the spirit of God, is united with us. We are going to live. That is, Mr. Richard. Yes, sir. You know, you know when when Jesus appeared at Lazarus' yeah. house, and they were saying, "Oh, why didn't you come since if you had come, my brother would have died." <laughs> Jesus said, "Listen, I say I am the resurrection and the yeah. life." Yeah. He said, he that believeth in me will never die. And if any man dies and he believes in me, he shall live. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is the God who quickeneth the dead and calleth forth the things that be not as though they were. Hallelujah. If we can just trust God and stop looking at ourselves, then we will not be afraid. Oh, will I go to heaven? Will I go to hell? Will I be saved? No, 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 no. Abraham did not stagger in okay. faith because of unbelief so i'm challenging you today if you are a believer i want you to believe 100 percent trust god 100 percent he quickens the dead he calls forth the things that be not as though they were he is the resurrection and the life in him we all have life if you are in him you have life you have eternal life and this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son does not have life. So stop looking at your body. Stop looking at what happens to you in the flesh. Paul said, henceforth, no we no man after the flesh. We are not looking at people, you know, after the flesh again. We are not looking at people after the flesh. Stop looking at what they do in the flesh. I say, oh, this one did this. One. No, no, we don't look at that again. We are trusting God by faith. Oh, yeah. Now, um, Mrs. Shalom is asking a question. Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 4 to 6. Talking about those who abandoned their faith, mm -hmm. right? But the Bible is telling us that Abraham did not abandon his faith. Abraham did not stagger in faith. Abraham did not, did not give up his faith. And that is why the Bible is telling us that Abraham was strong in faith. And that is what every believer should do. Be strong in mm -hmm. In faith, keep believing. If you keep believing, there is no way you will lose your salvation. I tell you the truth. No way. It is, it is impossible for the man who keeps believing to lose salvation. It is impossible. Because the salvation comes by faith. 
So Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, is talking about those who abandon their faith. But we are not abandoning our faith. We are not of them that draw back, but of them that believe unto the saving of souls. So anyone, anyone who is a man of faith cannot lose his salvation. You can't lose your salvation as long as you keep believing. Not even your sins and your shortcomings can make you lose your yeah. salvation. No. Yeah. Why? Because blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute yeah. sin. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputed righteousness without works. So now God is keeping a clean slate for every man who believes. So after losing your salvation, you cannot lose your salvation as long as you have faith in Christ. As long as you believe. So we are not going to go back. back to verse 7 of where we are reading now. Verse 7 of where okay. we are reading now says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven. Whose sins are not are put out of sight. Out of Yet, sight. what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Then, as long as we are in Christ Jesus, and Jesus Christ is seated on the mercy seat. That is why Brother Paul said, what shall separate us from the love of God? He said nothing. Nothing, nothing shall separate us. As long as we are in Christ Jesus, nothing. You know what I said? He said, the one the father has given me, he said, nobody's going to pluck them out of my hand. Mm. As long as we are in Christ Jesus, nobody's going to pluck us out. Yes, there are some people that are out there that don't have that understanding. They're on their own. But we that are in, the, in Christ, we that are not wavering in our faith, we that are holding mm. on to our faith, yes, we may have short, short comments. Yes, you may still have some little, little foxes and God is working on them. But we just need to keep put our faith in him. As long as we have put our faith in him, we cannot lose our salvation. The Bible says in, mm. let me go there. I think it's First Peter. First Peter. This First Peter. Where, where the scripture is saying, let me try and find it. That it is God himself that is guiding us to that salvation. God mm. himself is guiding us to that salvation. He's going to make sure that we get that salvation. Let me find it. Yes. <laughs> it's First Peter. I think it's, it's, it's First Peter, uh, either one or two. First Peter, go Please, guys, if you, if you want to call yes. in, you can call Adewale Richard Adedeji. Yeah. You can call... Adewale Richard. Let me, it is First Peter one, verse three. Let me read it in 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 um, in um, New Living Translation. First Peter one, verse nine, I think. Yes, uh, Mrs. Shalom, you are you are very correct. Now now you you got the point. You can abandon your faith. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can walk away from God. Yeah, you can, you can walk away. You can walk away from God. But it is not sin that will make you lose your salvation. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay, First Peter 1, 3. I want to read it in... Um, First Peter 1. Okay, let me read it. First Peter 1, they say, All honor to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For it is his... Uh, it is for... It is his bondless mercy that has given us the privilege of being born again so that we are now members of God's own family. Now we live in the hope of eternal life because Christ rose from the dead. And God has reserved for his children the priceless gift of eternal life. It is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the riches of change and decay. And five now say, and God in his mighty power will make sure that you get there safely to receive it because you are trusting him. It will be yours in that coming last day for all to see. We are supposed to trust God. What he has promised us, as long as we are trusting God, 
God Himself is the. the, the uh, uh, I did them. Um, Apostle, he said, the Holy. When we believe, God gave us the Holy Spirit as a seal for our mm. salvation. That when you go, and, I think, I think as guarantee. a guarantee. When we go and buy something, they give that. Okay, as long as you have this receipt. If that thing is poor, bring it back. The Holy Spirit is our guarantee that that promise, God is going to give us eternal life. As long as we are trusting in him. But the problem we see today is that a lot of us, when we now want to put our trust in paying tight, in sowing dangerous seed, we are breaking faith. We are no longer believing in that finished work. Now we are believing in our own, what we are doing. And that's the problem we see in the church today. A lot of people are not putting their trust in God. They are trying to help God. Just like, was it that guy that was trying to help the, what's it called, the comp, the ark? You know the guy that, <laughs> that's what a lot of us are trying to do today. We are trying to help God. But no, God doesn't need our help. God doesn't need our help. So we need we need to we need to ju we need to just believe just the way Mr. Abraham Sh believed. Mr. Shola said that. So is it possible to stop believing and lose one salvation, but can't sin make one lose it? Sin because when it co concerning sin, everything that needed to be done for sin has been done. When when the Israelites when they sacrificed those animals for one year, the whole of Israel they forget about sin. Sin has been taken care of for one year. But the scripture made us understand that the moment that lamb was sacrificed, everything concerning sin has been done away with. That's why the scripture said, after he sacrificed himself, he sat down. No priest, the priest that would only sit down, and which is our priest, he is the only priest found sitting down. Even the priests of other religions, because the work is never done, but Jesus Christ is seated at this moment in the right hand of majesty. Why? Because there's nothing else to be done regarding sin. He has taken the sin of the world away. The goat takes the sin of them away for one year. But this lamb, he has taken the sin of the whole world away. The sin forever. He said that sacrifice is good for all time. As long as it is seed time and harvest time. What Jesus Christ did on that cross is potent. And Sister Shola, oh. if you remember when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, it was the sacrifice that made you today. As you as you have believed in Jesus Christ, you don't feel any guilt about sin. That is the work of the sacrifice that was done two thousand years ago. <clears throat> It is sometimes it is, we allow ignorance to come into us. That's why we feel guilty when we do something wrong. That is the devil. That's why the, the Bible says, "Perfect love drives out fear." When we are fe when we are fearful, it's because of punishment. We need to believe in what Jesus Christ has done. Because perfect love drives out fear. We are in Christ Jesus Christ. He has God will not punish sin on another man twice because He has punished it on Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has been judged for the sin of every human being. God will not judge it again on any human being. But when you now, when the problem now is unbelief, breaking faith, not believing, when you don't believe on the sacrifice that has been carried out for you, then you would have to pay for your own sin yourself. But as long as we are in Christ Jesus, you are okay. The job is... Yeah, now, um, let me quickly um, address... Um, Mrs. Shalom. Now she she understood what we okay. said, so she wants to go back to read um, Hebrews six and okay. ten, and that's what people are using to say, "Oh, you lose your salvation, you lose your salvation." But now we understand that it's only when you lose your faith. It is not sin. It is faith. It is not sin at all because sin has been defeated. But you also know, Mr. Richard, that faith itself is a gift. The Bible told us that we are saved by faith through grace, mm -hmm. right? And that this faith itself is not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. So even for you to put faith in Jesus for your salvation, it was a gift that was given to you. 
So even faith itself is a gift. Now, if you got saved by the faith that is a gift that God gave to you, then you cannot even lose that faith. You listen. But there are a lot of people who have been in church for so many years who say that they are born again, and then later they say, oh, they are, they are actually dead. They are, they've abandoned their faith. They were not born again in the first place. But if it is God who gave you the gift of faith, you know one of the gifts of the Spirit is the gift of faith. If you got that gift of faith, forget it. You cannot even lose it. God will not even allow you because he gave you as a gift. So it's, it's simple. Now concerning Hebrews chapter 10, I did a video last year titled The Willful Sin. The Willful Sin, yeah. Can it be forgiven? Part one, part two, and part three. If you go on, if you go on Facebook now, just write, type the willful sin. There are three parts, part one to three. Just watch it. You will not have any problem with Hebrews 10. So you will understand what the willful sin is. That it is not what we think. What we think it is. It is still faith. It is still lack of faith. That is that willful sin. Okay, now let's let's finish Romans chapter four. I think we have just a few verses yeah. left. So we stopped at um, verse 21. The Bible said, And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. God did not write it in the Bible for Abraham's no, sake. Abraham could not read it. <laughs> but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised Jesus up from the dead. From the dead. So this Abraham story was not written here because of Abraham. It was written here because of us. To tell us that just the way Righteousness was imputed to Abraham, so it will be imputed unto us also if we believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Not if we pay tithes. Not if we obey Ten Commandments. It will be imputed unto us if we do one thing. What is that thing? Believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. If you believe that, you are saved. You have righteousness. Okay, verse 25. This Jesus was delivered for our offenses. <laughs> he died for our sins. He was sacrificed for our iniquities. And he was raised again for our justification. So, sin is not a problem anymore. Because this Jesus was offered for our sins. And he was raised to life after we got justification. So, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a proof that sin has been defeated. It's a proof that now God can look at us and say we are not guilty of sin. It's a proof that we have been justified. And that is it. Yeah. Mr. Richard. Yeah, I saw Sister Shola's question here. He says, so some of those Jews now preaching another gospel have left the faith without knowing it. This is my own honest opinion. Okay. And thank God that I've been able to go to a lot of these churches and of recent I was doing a research and I did a research about um, winners I said let me go and check what their decreed, that is what their mission statement is because from their mission statement you know what they believe in and what they are running with now if you go and check the mission statement of winners chapel, their mission statement the head of the church had an 18 hour vision and his 18 hour vision is to go and preach the word of faith to liberate people to make the poor people to be rich that's their mission statement if you look at that mission statement that is not the gospel to go and preach the word of faith to liberate people to make the people rich that is not the gospel the gospel is not oh. to make us rich. 
But Apostle said, I have confidence in the gospel, for it is the power of God saving all those who believe. He said, first the Jews, then the Gentiles. He now said, in it is the righteousness of God revealed. Who is the righteousness of God? Jesus Christ. And he now said, from faith to faith. That is the gospel. So if the foundation of the church is not on that, then they are not preaching the gospel. He said, go ye into the world and tell them the good news. What is the good news? I have destroyed sin. I have resurrected to justify human beings. Go and tell them that they can now approach the tree of life. If you look at most of these churches, that is not their mission statement. One said their own ministry is deliverance. Is deliverance salvation? The person that has been translated from the kingdom of darkness, darkness. to the kingdom of light. What deliverance do you need again? What you need is information about your newfound king to know how God has, how God has you know, made you justified. Because it says, for the gospel reveal how God has made us right with himself. The, anytime we go into the gospel, it's supposed to reveal to us how God has made us right with himself. The person that has not believed, it will bring them to God. The moment you believe, when you keep on preaching the gospel, it reveals to us how God has made us right. So most of these churches, okay, let me look at our, our, the, the most popular one. He, he was not even the one that got the mission for the church. He took over. And their own mission, when he came, his own mission was to build a church in five minutes' walk. That is not the gospel. For me to build a church in, in five minutes' walk, that is not the gospel. It is not a building. The building is not the gospel. So, for, from my own point of view, most of these people, they don't even understand what the gospel is. So, initially, I, I was trying to tell myself that maybe they missed it. But if you go and look at their mission statement, what they stand for, you, know, you now notice that if you understand the gospel, you now see that these people, don't, they, don't, they don't even understand what the gospel is before they started running. Okay, Mr. Richard, that's very correct. Now, I, I, I want to say this. Um, Mrs. Shalom is concerned about those, those preachers who are preaching another gospel. And, you know, Apostle Paul said that they will be accursed, right? Now, and um, she's asking, have they abandoned their faith? Have they lost their faith? Now, from what you said now, they never had faith before. From the beginning, they never had faith. Now, they started in unbelief. They started in works. They started with works. So, that is that most, most of us who grew up in church, we were taught works. So, we, if, if we had not really encountered Jesus, we would not have known that what we've been introduced to is works. So, most of these pastors, they grew up introduced to works. So, they really did not have faith. Now, so... They have been in unbelief. So it's not as if they, they, had, they had faith before and abandoned the faith. No. Most of them started in unbelief. They started by human, human efforts, efforts in works. Then, for the few of them, let's assume the few of them who had faith before and then abandoned that their faith. Now, this is what I want to say. You know, Hebrews said that it's impossible to restore them back again. But these people, right, they have not really abandoned Christ. Though. They still believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Right? They believe. But they think that it is their works, their human efforts, that will take them to heaven, that will give them salvation. So Paul now wrote in Galatians 5 that if you are trying to be justified by the works of the law, he said you, you cut yourself off from yeah. Christ. You have fallen from grace. That is one. So they cut themselves off from the vine. Christ is the vine. So they cannot abide in the vine. They are cut off. But you know what I believe? Let me tell you what I believe. Those ones who believed before and they cut themselves off because of works, by the grace of God, they are going to believe again. Now listen to me. They are going to believe again. And if they believe again, God is able to graft them in again. Roman, Romans 11. The Jews were cut off because of unbelief. And the Bible said, if they do not keep on abiding in unbelief, then they can be grafted in again, if they believe again. So, 
if they abandon that walk gospel and they turn again to the faith gospel, faith alone in Christ, God is able to graft them in again. But what about all the people they, they, they led astray by their messages and those things? Now, the Bible told us, I think it was First Corinthians, that every man's work shall be tested right. by fire. Now, when every man's work is tested by fire, if the man's work that he has done survives, then the man receives the reward. But if the man's work is born, the man himself shall be yeah. saved, but as through fire. Right? So, they are leading people astray, preaching the wrong message. So, God is going to judge their works. If their work passes the test, then they receive a reward. But if their work is burnt because it was laid on another foundation, not Jesus Christ, if their work is burnt, then they themselves will be saved. But they will be saved through fire. So the Bible said. So no other foundation can be laid except Christ Jesus. But if you lay another foundation, just be ready that God is going to pass your work through fire. If your work mm -hmm. burns, you will still be saved because you have faith in Christ. Right? But you are going to be saved through fire. But, for, but no reward for you. But those whose work will stand the test, they shall be rewarded. So that, that, that's what I will have to say. Uh, and and um, to buttress what you are saying, that what about those that have led us straight? Nobody has the right to say that somebody has led him astray. Because God yes. is reaching out to each one of us. God is reaching out to each one of us. God wants to have a relationship with one of us, one on one. Yeah. So nobody has an excuse to say that, ah, somebody led me astray. God is looking at yes. the door of your heart. He wants to speak to you. He wants to reveal himself to you. God does not want a third party. He doesn't want somebody to, he doesn't want to go to somebody and reveal himself. And no, God has time for each one of us. No, even though we are six billion, God has time for each one of us. God will speak to Pastor Clem. God will speak to me. God wants to speak to each one of us. So we are responsible for our life. That's why the Bible says we should guide our hearts. I should guide my heart with all diligence because out of it are the issue of life. So it is not somebody else's responsibility to guide my heart for me. So I have to choose if I want to serve God. So, and the Bible says each one of us will stand before Christ. You won't stand with your Jew or your pastor. <laughs> it is you. So we all have to find God and hold on to him ourselves. Uh, that's, that has been fantastic. <laughs> yes. So we are we are waiting for your calls now or your questions because we're we're running off now. Mr. Mr. Deji said he was going to join us. I don't even think he's here again. Who? Mr. Deji. Deji. Ah, okay. He, he couldn't come back. Okay. You know we have we have finished Romans chapter three and four. So if you have a question or you want to call in, please you are free to call in now. You can call Adewale Richard Adedeji. So you quickly write him if you want to call. Or if you have a question. You know, that guy that was saying last week that um, you don't get salvation by faith, I'm sure today, if you listen to this video, his question would have been answered already. Okay. Mrs. Izzine is just coming back now. <laughs> I think she's... But we're running off. <laughs> so while we're waiting for your questions, um, don't forget the central... Uh, topic or the central points of Romans chapter 4. It is faith alone. We are justified only by faith, not by works, not by human efforts. And we are charged to be strong in the faith like Abraham and not to look at what happens in our human body. But we should look at the God who is who, who quickened the dead and call it for the things that be not as though they were. My, my that is what, God wants says, what deliverance does someone born of an incorruptible seed need? <laughs> no, not, not deliverance. Incorruptible at all. seed. Ah. Deliverance. Okay, so um, the, our, next, our next Bible study class will be on Romans chapter 5. Yeah. Should we do it midweek on Wednesday or Thursday? I'm okay with Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday or okay. Sunday will be okay for me. By Thursday, I'm back okay. at work again. So, okay, so so let's do it on Wednesday. Yeah, let's do it Wednesday. 
So on Wednesday, we're doing Romans chapter 5, another interesting passage again. So you can go and read it ahead of time. Romans 5, read all translations that you have. Romans chapter 5. So on Wednesday, on Wednesday, uh, that will be the same time, eh? Should, should we do 2, uh, two no, p.m. We can, we can do 2 p.m. on Wednesday. Okay, let's go. Let's do the one of um, six. Yeah. Should or five thirty. Five thirty your time. No. Five thirty. No. Five thirty yeah. your time. Seven thirty my, my yeah. time. Okay, so five thirty UK time and seven thirty Ukrainian time. That is six thirty Nigerian time on Wednesday. We shall be uh, discussing Romans yeah. chapter five. Romans chapter five. Please, anybody who missed this video should start from the beginning again and, and watch it and share to your and friends. And if you have questions, you can uh, put the questions there. We'll, we'll get back to it and answer or we answer on, on yes. Wednesday. Yeah. Yes. Thank okay, you. Mr. Okay, Richard. Thank you very much for having me again. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, thank, thank you so you. much. Sister Shola, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. We, we love you and we appreciate your contributions and your questions and for sharing the video. So we'll see you on Wednesday. Uh, 5 30 p.m. UK time and 7 30 p.m. Ukrainian time, 6 30 p.m. Nigerian time. God bless you. Do have a lovely week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.